Well, good evening. How are you folks doing tonight? It's such a beautiful day it's been, and we just praise the Lord for all that he's done for us. And uh, we're going to get in something different tonight for you. We're going to talk about perilous times and how God described it years ago. And I, I'll tell you, we're in perilous times right now. The time is at hand. The time is at hand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, Lord, for the, the day that you have blessed us with. And, Lord, it, it, it's so exciting just uh, getting into your word. And, Lord, I just pray that you bless it tonight. Uh, that, Lord, that you put a little excitement in it. But, Lord, that you would put a little wisdom in it. Lord, letting us know our responsibilities. And, Lord, we just be ever grateful to you. Bless us now. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Well, let's look at this a little bit. The coming apostasy is what Paul was uh, uh, preaching here in, in Timothy. He was teaching Timothy this. In uh, chapter, uh, chapter 3 of uh, 2 Timothy is where it will be right now. Chapter 3 in 2 Timothy. And Paul says this, This know also. He's already taught uh, Timothy, and he was already saying about some of the things that was going to come. But he said, This know also, that in the last, last days, perilous times will come up. For then, for then shall lovers of their selves, covetousness, boasters, proud people, blasphemers, and disobedient to parents, and unthankfulness and unholy times will come. Think about it, people. Look, look at the times that we're going through right now. All the riots, uh, all the dishonest things that, that's going on. Uh, breaking into uh, houses, breaking into uh, businesses, uh, tearing them up, burning them down. These are perilous times, and the time is at hand. Paul goes on to say, uh, without, uh, they're without natural affection, uh, truce breakers, false uh, accusers, uh, incontinence, uh, and, and there are uh, even uh, fierce people out there, uh, uh, disobedient, despisers of, of those that are good. And there's a lot of that going on right now. Not only that, in verse 4 it says they're traitors. Uh, they're, they're heady. They're high-minded. They're, they're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. More than lovers of God. Folks, we don't want to underestimate the power of God. We don't want to do that. We're his children. He's our heavenly father. He, he taught us even as fathers to protect our children and our families. He is protecting us. He is watching over us. Don't cut him short of what he can do for you. Don't do that. And, and that's, what, that's what this world has done. They have cut God short of what he could do. I, I'm, I'm looking for his power to come down soon. And I believe that God's up there, and one day he's going to say, I've had enough. I've had enough. And so so uh, let's, let's read on. Look, look at this. That they're having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Oh, they think they know God, but they deny his power because they don't know it. They don't know it. They have forgotten God and gone out and done these riotous things. For, for of this sort are they which creep into houses. That's what they're doing. They creep into houses. They, they're uh, heavy, or head captain, uh, allies. Uh, they're uh, captain, silly woman, uh, uh, laden with sins. They're led away with divers lust, and they're ever learning and never able to come 
to the knowledge of the truth. How can they find the truth when they don't look for it? How can they do that? They're ever learning and even able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They can't do that. Verse 8. Now, as Janus and, and, and Jambres, and, and they stood uh, with Moses, so these also resist the truth. Remember how they uh, fought against Moses and what God told Moses how to lead the people? And they fought against Moses. That's what's happening today. That is what is happening today. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest in all men, and and uh, uh, all men as theirs also was. It's not going to. It's not going to keep on going because God's going to send His power down. As I mentioned before, power, uh, God's going to say, I've had enough, and he's going to send it. He goes on to say in verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine. It's the manner of life, the purpose of it, the faith, the long-suffering, the charity, and the patience. Paul says, you know what I've been preaching you, and, and this is the truth. This is the the word of God, what I'm preaching to you, it, you need to look at it and you need to remember. It, it's the truth. It's the truth. And uh, the truth is what we're looking for and we're not finding it because we cut God short. We cut God short. And, and so uh, down, in, uh, down in verse uh, 16 is what Paul wanted to bring out here. All this that he is telling them, all these perilous times, all this stuff that's going to happen, the Bible claims to be the inspired word of God. And Christians, I, I believe we forgot that. I truly, honestly believe that we forgot that. In verse 16 it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is uh, uh, profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness. How, how do we know that? How do we know that? Well, the scripture is given by the inspiration of God. See, the Holy Spirit is the author of the word. The Holy Spirit is the author of the word. Uh, uh, man is the instrument that God used by the Holy Spirit to write the word. And not only that, the results are the infallible word of God. The infallible word of God. We, we were in a deep subject in uh, Sunday school this past uh, Sunday. And uh, we were in the book of Romans. And by the way, the book of Romans, if you study the book of Romans, you, you can see it today because it's just what's happening to us today. But in the 13th chapter of uh, the book of Romans, uh, we were in a Sunday school lesson here where, where, um, where Paul was telling uh, the Romans back then, you know, you, you got to honor the authority. We got to honor the law. And I explained to the Sunday school class that, you know where the law came from? came from right here, God's Word. Remember the Ten Commandments? And I told my Sunday school class, I have a big sign out in my front yard, and it's got the Ten Commandments on it. That's a reminder when they come to my house, that's what I live by. That's the law. That's the law. And, and that's the law that we all should be living by. That's God's law. But we're to honor. Jesus told us to honor what was Caesar's and to honor what is God's. And we have forgotten that. As I mentioned, we, 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 we count God short now. Don't count him too short because God is God and he can do all things. All things is possible with him. And remember that. We can do all things through him. But Paul was saying, but you know, honor the law 
that don't go against the law for you'll get in trouble. You don't need to do that. But the, the sad thing about it is, that's just what we've done. That's what Paul was telling uh, Timothy back in Second Timothy. That, you know, we, we fell short of the glory of God because we are following in a wrong pattern today. Don't let your faith fail in the Lord. He's going to protect you. He's going to protect you. Look at verse 8 of Romans 13, if you would. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Mm. All right. That's the, the love of this nation for the Lord has fallen, has fallen to pieces. In verse 9, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The love of this nation is falling. It's sinking every day. I'm getting tired of uh, listening to all the news about the, uh, what the, uh, this world is coming to. I would love to turn my TV on or open up the newspaper and, and see where there was a great mass revival. How lost souls got saved. How all this was straightened out. That would be the best news that we've heard in ages. And uh, we won't hear it. We won't hear it. But there's one thing for sure. The end is coming. The end of all of this is coming because Jesus is coming soon. Look at um, verse 10 again. Love worketh no ill to the neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time at this um, that's now, it is at high hand and high time to awake out of a sleep. Let me tell you, Christians, better wake up. You've been sleeping too long. We need to come alive. We need to let the world know that God is still here. We still stand for him. We need to get out of this deep sleep. And that's just what we're in. We're in a deep sleep. It says, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Jesus is coming soon. I don't want him to come and find his Christians asleep because that's not going to work. That's not going to work. We're not to be asleep and be like that. So let's start waking up and realizing, you know, who do we represent? In verse 12, it says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's a warning. That's what we got to do. We got to cast off all this darkness that's falling around us and we got to put on the armor of light. What's the armor of light? It's the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's our belief and faith and trust in Him. That's what our armor is. At verse 13, it says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in uh, chambering or uh, wantingness, not in strife, not in envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh. To fulfill the lust thereof. Wake up, Christians. Put on that light armor that you just put on. And let's show the world that we stand 
for the truth, for the truth. I hope you got something out of that this evening. I know I did. And it just enlightens me, you know, to get into God's Word and and get digging into it and letting Him speak to you. Every word that is written in this book was inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's the author of it. He gave it to the men to write. And it speaks to us. Every word speaks to us, and it comes from God. If you want to know what to do, Go to the instruction book. That's the best instruction book you'll ever find. All these other uh, books that they got out in the world can't match this. This is the number one seller. This is the one that uh, lets you know how to live. How to live a good, uh, peaceful, loving life. And it's through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't lose your faith. Keep on keeping on for Jesus. The time is now. The time is now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you, Lord, for your word. And I pray, Lord, that uh, it was a blessing uh, to the folks tonight. I know it, it, it blessed me. And, Lord, I pray that we as Christians can wake up, put on that light armor that you given to us years ago, when, when Jesus died on the cross and when they took him down and, and put him in the grave as he predicted and then in three days he rose again. He is alive and well today and Lord we have let him down. We have cut him short. But Lord we need to wake up. We need to, uh, to get out of that sleep and put on that light armor and show the world that we are Christians. Bless us now. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen.